the force of one such high-velocity impact created tremendous heat. Earth began roasting from the inside. Iron and nickel melted and sank to the core, generating heat like a massive furnace. The outer rock, or magma, was completely melted, producing a molten ocean. The planet was a raging inferno floating in space, literally hell on Earth. The most severe impactors could have sterilized the planet. And you get a steam atmosphere and heat the entire surface of the Earth above sterilization temperatures. Formation of the Earth's core, sometimes called the Great Iron Catastrophe, occurred within the first 40 million years of our planet's existence. And it had a profound effect on our future. Within the iron core, the rotating ball of molten iron generated a remarkable magnetic field. This set up the conditions for a habitable planet. By getting all the iron down to the center of the planet, you had a solid core that eventually drove the protective magnetic field that surrounds our planet. Without the magnetic field, Earth would be an airless waste, devoid of life. A gusty wind of material speeds from the sun past Earth at a million miles an hour and could erode our atmosphere to nearly nothing in a few million years. But Earth's magnetic field deflects the solar wind and preserves our air. But even with the magnetic field, violence and chaos continued to plague our planet. Above the Earth's iron core, its rocky mantle was melting, forming volcanoes that rose to the surface and burped up noxious gases and lava. And the collisions kept coming. One impact would forever change the course of Earth's history and the fate of mankind. About 50 million years after the Earth began forming, it experienced a collision that would steer it in a new direction. An object the size of Mars slammed right into Earth which was already 80% of its total size. The explosive impact melted both the planet's outer layers and fused the two together to form a larger Earth. Some molten debris that didn't blend together coalesced to shape our moon. Planetary scientist Bill Hartman first proposed this theory after NASA's first mission to the moon. When the Apollo astronauts brought back rocks from the moon, and we could actually see what the rocks were made out of, they found out that the rocks are like lava that you can find on Earth, which tells you that the moon material and the Earth material are very, very similar. Earth's intimate relationship with its moon gave the growing planet a competitive edge. The moon is what causes the seasons because some parts of the year the North Pole is tilted toward the sun and later on the South Pole is tilted toward the sun. The moon holds that tilt steady. It, it, the, the various gravity forces that are exerted tend to act in a way that holds that steady. After the epic collision, which created our moon, our planet was over 90% of its total mass. The planetary formation process involved almost a biological competition of many bodies bashing into each other at very high speeds. When the collision subsided nearly 3.9 billion years ago, our solar system was left with eight planets, or nine if you still count Pluto. Earth secured the third orbital position from the sun, which is now 93 million miles away. Planets don't like each other. 
because they're gravitationally tugging against each other, so that they're, they're, they're equally spaced. Each planet is a certain fraction further from the sun. The objects that didn't become planets became refugees. Asteroids made of rock and iron found asylum in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Comets composed of ices, dust, and rock sought shelter in the Kuiper belt just beyond the planet Neptune. Others migrated to the Oort cloud over a trillion miles from Earth. Battered portions are a good analog to the early solar system, the comets and asteroids that have survived since the early days. And like these cars, which are kept here for their parts, uh, we can also go to comets and asteroids for vital parts that have been stored since the formation of the solar system. Over the course of Earth's history, many misguided asteroids have strayed off their orbital path and landed on our planet as meteorites. Over the years, scientists have analyzed these meteorites and determined their age through radioactive dating. And since meteorites were formed at the same time as our planets, they provide the age of Earth, roughly four and a half billion years old. Scientifically, this is fantastic. It's like looking at your family history and finding pieces of your first relative all the way back in Earth history. They're still out there. Asteroids and comets may also shed light on the origins of water on our planet. Three point nine billion years ago, the Earth cooled forming a thick silicate crust over its mantle, an iron and nickel core. Warm liquid soon covered the planet's surface, except for a few volcanic islands dotting the globe. One of the Earth's lucky properties is that it happened to be born in just the right place. It's, it's in the, what's called the habitable zone. It's the right distance from the sun, where its ocean does not boil away or too hot or too far away, where its ocean freezes over. But where did Earth get all this water? One view is that water came from volcanoes, which have been around since the early formation of Earth. Volcanoes spewed out massive amounts of steam into the atmosphere. When the Earth cooled, volcanic steam condensed into rain and thereby supplied the planet with water. But where did the steamy water emitted from volcanoes come from? Volcanoes basically recycle material from melted rock in the mantle of the Earth, including water. But that's not really new water in the sense that it was there before in the oceans and is coming out again for the second time. NASA senior scientist Michael Muma says our planet's water came from space. Comets, which are made up of frozen gases, could have showered Earth with water during the relentless impacts of its infancy. The delivery of water from an icy body depends very critically on how large the particle is. The smaller bodies that came in would break up high in the atmosphere. The other bodies deliver their material to the surface of the Earth, and they can actually vaporize that material that becomes the water on Earth. Muma is trying to determine if cometary water is made up of the same ingredients as our planet's water. We know that the Earth's oceans contain a mixture of normal water, H2O, and heavy water, HDO, which includes deuterium, a form of hydrogen that